afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the Edible Garden Outdoor Kitchen Chef Demonstration. Uh, my name is Christina Curry, and I'm one of the garden chefs working here in the garden. Um, what we do every weekend, we have um, a cooking demonstration, and we try to feature things that are seasonal, fresh, and specifically as local as we can get out of our garden here. Um, we can't always pull everything from our garden because obviously we may not have a garden for you to look at by the time you get here. But we do try to harvest as much as we can. So for today's demonstration, I'm going to be working with um, some zucchini, which is a summer variety of uh, zucchini. And um, these right here all came from our garden. So they've kind of got your standard, you know, zucchini that you see in the grocery store. But they also brought me this yellow one, which is like a huge, like sunburst kind of zucchini, which I won't be using for this recipe, but you know, it's kind of cool to look at. So I'll leave it up here. But what I'm going to be making with the zucchini today is oh. zucchini fritters. And I'm going to show you this recipe. It's pretty simple and straightforward. Um, it's topped off with a little bit of a lemon aioli, which um, just gives it a little extra burst of flavor with each bite. So the first thing that I'm going to start with is, well, I'm going to talk about the zucchini a little bit. Um, what I want to do with the zucchini for this recipe, and also you can use yellow squash in here as well, I mean, or anything. It's kind of like the whole fritter technique. Once you kind of see when I'm making the batter, I'll explain a little bit more. But once you um, get the basic batter going for the fritter, you could pretty much add anything that you wanted to it. Today I'm doing zucchini, but I mean, the possibilities are kind of limited to your imagination. So, you know, if you love seafood and, you know, corn and all those things, you can incorporate into this basic fritter batter. So just something to keep in mind. But I'm starting with the zucchini, and I'm using a grater to kind of, um, you know, get it grated. I'm using the coarser side of the, of the grater. Um, you could definitely use a, um, like a Japanese mandolin. You could do like a fine julienne on this which actually is still really nice in this recipe because I like to see the zucchini. I like to have texture. I don't like when it's like too fine. So this is a this is a great size, but like I said, um, that Japanese mandolin, if you julienne that, that works just as well for this recipe. And I have a big bowl here that I already did ahead of time. So I'm gonna add this to it. And then the next thing we wanna get mixed in with our zucchini is some diced onion, which I already diced it up, so magically it's ready to go. <laughs> but you know, I always dice the onion every year. People always come here, they always see me do that every time. I'm always doing the same thing. So I figured, you know, they'll give me more time to talk about things that you may want to hear about. So, all right, next, I'm going to add a little bit of flat leaf parsley into this mix. And the thing is, I'm a big, like, flat leaf Italian parsley person. If you see curly parsley in the grocery store, you know, please don't substitute that for flat leaf parsley. It doesn't have any flavor. It's just kind of there. It just really acts as a garnish. So if you find yourself, you know, there's no flat leaf parsley, I would definitely suggest you pick another herb that you like, you know, try chives, tarragon, oregano, anything that has a strong flavor, because what we're trying to do is, is add flavor. We don't just want to add ingredients for no reason. It's like don't don't waste that space in your recipe when you could be adding flavor because you know the main goal when you're cooking you want to add flavor at every point that you can in your recipe so by the time you get to the end it's something that tastes really really good but I'm just gonna take my flat leaf parsley just the leaves and just rough chop them and we're gonna mix that right in it doesn't have to be perfect it doesn't need to be chopped you know until it's nothing left all right, so this is everything we need in here. I have the recipe written at home. It's a little easier, you know, using separate bowls. But I'm going to kind of mix everything and, and get it going in one bowl to make it uh, a little bit easier to demo for you guys. So I'm going to start with flour, and this is our, our the batter portion that we're getting to. And I'm just going to use um, a cup for this. And then I'm gonna add some baking powder because again, you think about fritters, it's something light, it's airy. We wanna keep lightness, we want things to rise. So that's why we're gonna include some baking powder in this recipe. And plus it's gonna react once we add our, our club soda or um, and it kinda helps. You know, anything you can do to help your fritters rise and float and be light, those are all the things that we're really working towards. So we need use about a teaspoon, teaspoon and a half. And then I'm just going to kind of like whisk that together. 
And I'm going to make a little well in the middle. And then that's where I'm going to add the egg in. Which if you were using separate bowls, you could go ahead and mix your egg in with your zucchini and onion mixture right here. I'm going to drop the egg right in the center. And then I'm also going to add um, my club soda or carbonated water. The only thing I would suggest, don't use something that's like, you know, like a flavored soda yeah. when you're doing this, unless you really love flavored soda. But I really want my recipe to be nice and clean, and I don't want to compete with zucchini, because zucchini is not the strongest flavor in the world, so we definitely don't want to add something that's going to be too strong. But I'm going to add about a cup to this. Get right in the center. And you can see it's already fizzing, it's reacting with the baking powder. And again, I'm going to season this with a little bit of salt and pepper. It's just the seasoning at every layer. You know, when I have my zucchini mix, I'm going to put a little salt and pepper in here. Salt and pepper in here. You can't just season this, this recipe at the end. And, you know, when you're, especially when you're frying something, there's always that center. If you're doing anything, even, you know, like your fried chicken or any meats, you always need to season the meat. Season everything in its layer. Don't just say, I'm just going to season the flour. you got to season the flour and the egg and the, the, the breadcrumbs. you got to season everything. And it's not going to be too salty. You'll find that by the end, it just tastes just perfect. Like, it's just it's like, what did you do to this? But you just took the time, a little bit of salt and pepper along the way makes a big difference than trying to, you know, dump it all in at the end. All right, so you just want to mix this batter until it's nice and smooth. And someone was asking me in the other demo about, you know, letting this sit. You don't want to let this sit for too long because we need the fizz. Just like your drink goes flat, this batter can go flat. So you kind of want to work with it. I would say not more. Don't let it sit for you know, more than an hour. You could do this ahead of time if you have guests coming over, but you don't want to make this the day before and, and then pull it out the next day to use um, if you want to, you know, create the recipe and have the nice light fritter that you're looking for. Okay. So now that I've got this batter, I'm going to take some of the mixture of our zucchini and our onions and the parsley. And then I'm just going to fold this in. And be kind of gentle with it. Alright. And the thing is, if you, you kind of have to use your eye, you know, the batter, if it seems like it's too tight, please add some more um, carbonated water to it to kind of loosen it up. Because you're going to see when you start frying these, you want it to be light. If it's too thick, it's going to be too gummy in the middle. And sometimes I think that's where people kind of make a mistake when they try fritters or if you're doing tempura even. It's kind of the same idea. You want to keep it light. Um, you don't want to spend too much time mixing it because we want to keep the air, the air bubbles right in there. And get rid of that. All right, so I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to fry some of these up. I've got some oil, and I'm using canola oil. And it's over, um, I've had it preheating over a medium heat, but once I start frying, I want to turn it up for two reasons. Once you start adding stuff to the oil, it's going to cool it down. And we really need a hot oil um, when we're frying something like this. Like a lot less than what you would think to make a big fritter because by the time it really you know puffs up I mean less than a tablespoon and then I'm going to bring this over I'll kind of show you how they look once I get them in here and they don't take that long to cook either so this is definitely something you want to do right at the last moment So this is like the tip. Please don't move your oil at home. I just want to show you guys. <laughs> but you see how it's already puffed up and it's just been in there just a few seconds. So oh, can everybody see them? Yeah. Okay. All right. So that's how that works. And then just want to, you know, kind of keep an eye on it because they do. They cook up really, really quickly. All right. So now for the sauce that we're going to be making to top this recipe up. We're doing a lemon aioli. So, um, glasses, you can see. Right. so traditionally an aioli is a garlic mayonnaise 
But now, you know, the word aioli gets tossed around everything. It's pretty much just like any sauce where there's mayo in it and you flavor it with roasted red pepper and garlic and basil and all kinds of things. People usually attach the word aioli. You know, it sounds really fancy. It kind of, you know, impresses people when you're like, oh, I made, uh, you know, red pepper aioli and all you did was mix mayonnaise and some roasted red pepper from a, a jar. But the thing is, it still tastes good and, you know, it adds a nice um, richness to it. But for this one, I'm using equal parts of sour cream and mayonnaise. One, I don't like the taste sometimes of either one, like if you use all mayo or use all sour cream, because then it does taste a little bit like you just pulled it from a jar. So a nice way to kind of cut it and add richness is to mix the two together. And the same thing, you could even use like a creme fraiche, which is even a little bit richer than your regular sour cream. But I'm just using regular sour cream. And then, of course, I'm using some Duke's mayo because it's so good. <laughs> But I'm going to take about equal parts of the two, and then just kind of mix it together. And then we're going to flavor this with some lemon juice. And then I'm just going to squeeze it through my fingers because I don't want any seeds to end up in here. Of course, we don't want people biting into a seed. And again, start with what you think you're going to need because you can always add more. You know, that's the thing with your salt, any of your seasonings. You never want to go overboard at any point because you can always add more to your dishes, but you can never take back when you have too much. I'm going to mix this in gently. And I want to be careful. I know there's dairy in here. And, you know, when you're mixing dairy and acids together, you know, sometimes you can cause like a curdling effect. Not so much with sour cream because it's already been soured, but if you're using heavy cream or milk or anything and sometimes you have that um, citrus element to it you just want to be really careful about how and when you add it because you know if you just drop some i mean basically that's how sour cream is made if you take heavy cream and then you drop lemon juice in it or vinegar that's what it becomes like the same way when you whip it like a um, whipped cream but it becomes the soured version so we want to mix this kind of gently and then i want to add some fresh chives to this and these chives are chives that we got right here. We have them growing um, in our pots around the garden here. So we were able to go and get this this morning. So this is freshly picked. And again, I'm using chives because I think it's just a nice flavor. It's aromatic. It goes with the, you know, the onion flavor and it pulls everything out. But any herb that you like, I mean, you could definitely, I think this would be great if you kind of had um, a Mediterranean inspired, maybe some oregano and some mint in here with the lemon. It's actually, pushing it kind of towards like a tzatziki flavor, you know, add some chopped cucumber. All those things would be really nice to top off the zucchini fritter. All right, so we just stir this together a little bit, and I'm going to season it with a little salt and a little bit of pepper, just because everything needs seasoning. I mean, it doesn't come out the jar with a seasoning, so you have to give it, you have to put some love in the food if you don't you know, care about the people that are coming over. You want you want to, like, cook and show that you really kind of care about it the end result. Alright. Got our aioli going. Let's see. Oh yeah, um, we're going to go ahead and start serving the fritters because I really um, want you guys to taste them while they're um, still kind of warm. Really, you should serve these immediately. Obviously, anything fried, it always tastes best when it's fried out the oil. But um, does anyone have any questions? Because I'm going to keep cooking up um, some more fritters so everybody gets a sample. Um, this recipe and all of the recipes that we've done um, in our Garden Chef series this summer and from last summer are on the Atlanta Botanical Gardens website um, on the Garden Chef page. So um, feel free to visit and look at any of the recipes that we've done. Um, our tasting cups are compostable, so we have a special trash that we'd like to collect them in. So when you get finished, please uh, drop them off over there. But thank you so much for your time and enjoy your zucchini fritter. Thank you. Thank you.